starting these is always really difficult. Once you get going, it's fine, but actually starting to talk at nothing in an empty room to yourself is really quite tricky. Um, but anyway, hi, um, and welcome to the Ferret and Gibbon podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of the Ferret and Gibbon podcast. Um, welcome to my space where I can, where I can, where I do, um, waffle on about um, knitting and other crafty projects and what I've been up to and the state of the world and stuff like that. For people who've seen me before, thank you very much and welcome back. Um, for newbies, the potted history of me is that my name is Claire, I live um, in Hastings on the south coast of England. I work for an environmental charity as my day job. I am a member of a local drumming group and I like to knit and craft and yeah, stuff. I think that's why you're here, isn't it? Yeah. So what I, I have a few practically finished projects to show you today. A work in progress, some planned knitting, some refound stash and a couple of and a, and a pledge to stop buying more yarn sort of ish. We'll come to that. <laughs> but anyway, um, I have left the first product that I wanted to show you in a different bag. So let me pause and go and get that first. <laughs> and there was me thinking I got myself all organized this week. Oh, not at all. Anyway, so the first project that I have just wanted to show you is the cough bureau shawl that I had. I hadn't cast it on last time, but I'd shown you the colour combinations. So this is the project that I'm doing where I'm making it out of the the black, the cream, and the green yarns that I showed off last time. So the black and the cream are. Um, they are Manas del Uruguay, the silk blend, so soft and squishy. And then the green is a sturdy DK by um, Chromatic Yarns in the Dagon colorway. Um, and I hadn't bought, originally bought them to work together, but they work are working really nicely together. And so if I show you the shawl that they are currently turning into. Um, this is say it's the cough bureau shawl by somebody. Um, what you'll learn as we go through this podcast is that I have a memory like a goldfish and can remember nothing. Um, the cough bureau shawl by Stella Stella Egidi. Um, and it's a really fun knit. It's broken up into all the different stripes, but the stripes have got like different texture patterns within them. So it starts off with a bit of stockinette. And then I got bobbles. I've never done bobbles before, so that was really good fun. Um, learning to do a bit of bobbling. Um, then I've got another section of stockinette and then some sort of cabling. Um, except not cable. It's cable stitches, but not cables. As, um, But that gives a really interesting and, again, another quite fun texture pattern. Then in the black, it's quite difficult to see because it is in the black, but if I hold it... Possibly like that, you might be able to see it. They're sort of um, using slip stitches, a sort of a triangle, triangular chevron pattern within there, which is really lovely. Um, I've just finished another stocking, uh, stocking at section, and I'm not sure what comes up next, but the next is a white stripe. And you can also see that between each of the stripes, um, there's sort of always a thin stretch of line again with little cable-y bits that sort of transition between the two. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's got a whole bunch of stitches that I've never tried before, which is good fun. It's going to be a nice, big, warm shawl that I will probably have finished just in time for spring when I will no longer need it. But I'm really pleased with the way the colours are coming together. I think it looks really striking. Um, the yarns are a delight to work with. The pattern's really interesting. Um, so generally, I'm really pleased with that. Um, yeah, thumbs up for that one. 
all back in the bag again. Yeah. Everything just about fits in my bee bag. So that. Boom. So that's my main project on the needles at the moment. That's my commute knitting. It's, really, it's a bit big to be commute knitting, but it's commute knitting at the moment. The other project that I've got going on at the moment, I've picked up my With Ease shawl again. And let me remember the name again because I can't remember. The With Ease shawl by Sylvia McFadden. Um, and I, yeah, I picked this up again. I just think I showed it to you a few episodes ago. Um, it is a grey and yellow shawl with again a really lovely texture pattern on it um the design itself is actually just a single color design but i had some yellow to match the gray and i thought i'd add a splash of color in it so i'm just doing every couple of pattern repeats i'm just putting a little bit of extra yellow into it because i can um i really enjoy knitting this it's gonna be again delightful and squishy this is again another Nice heavyweight shawl that I will, again, no doubt finish just as the weather starts getting nicer again. I'll have everything ready for next year. It'll be wonderful. Um, I have had a minor issue on this one. So I started making it. I bought a little while ago. I made, I wanted to make myself a really nice hat. And I bought um, two skeins of the grain, two skeins of the yellow of this, which is Malabrigo Worsted, I think think yes Malabrigo worsted um because I'm I was rubbish at getting the right amount of yarn for, for anything so I thought it was a, essentially it was a one skein pattern I bought four skeins of yarn for it two grey and two yellow but the plan was to make a big pom-pom out of one of the skeins which I haven't done um which meant that by the time I'd finished my bright yellow hat which I love and I will show you at some point um once I'd finished that, I had three skeins of yarn left over, two grey and one yellow. So, or two grey and almost one whole yellow. I might have touched a little bit the second skein. I can't remember. Um, and that's when I started making this. And I thought, oh, this is really nice. And then, of course, because I, didn't, I hadn't bought the yarn for this project, I did not have enough yarn. So, it's been sat in the bag for a little while, not doing much, but I bought some more yarn. Which is of a completely different dye lot. Utterly, completely, noticeably different dye lot. So the new grey, if I can show you the old grey and the new grey. Same colourway, very noticeably a different dye lot. Which is a bit disappointing. Because I really like this grey. I mean, I like this one, but it's not what I started out with. And because I hadn't been thinking about this at all, I had knit right up until the end of my first grey. And therefore I couldn't sort of didn't have any t any grey left to alternate in. So I was going to then frog back and then alternate some in. But with all of the yarn overs and increases, I've only just started being able to confidently pick up stockinette stitch. I'm not at the stage yet where I can confidently go back and pick up, um, yeah, all those yarn overs and all those decreases and make sure I actually have the right number of stitches at the end. So I decided instead that what I would do to transition from one colour to the other is say, fuck it, and just change. I mean, look at that transition. That is a really noticeable transition. But... I'm calling it a design feature. It's going to be a short. If it was in the middle of a jumper or something like that, I think I would have a much bigger issue with this. But it's a short. The way when, when I'm wearing it, it's all twisted round. It just look like a stripe. It'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, so we're going with massive, noticeable change in colour for this, which is a real shame. But life is too short to give too much of a shit about it. So. That is where I'm at with this one. So I think the last time I showed it, when I first showed it to you, I was about here. I picked up about about a whole pattern repeat and a bit since then. And I do love the pattern. I think the shawl's going to be stunning. 
and I think when I hold it further away and wrap it round, it will look like a, it'll look like a design feature. Hopefully. If not, it'll just be delightfully warm anyway, regardless of what it ends up looking like. And looking at the other skeins that I've picked up to finish it off with, there's quite a lot of colour variation in these ones as well. So I say that one's got noticeably blue bits and I might I should probably I should probably alternate skeins for the rest of it whether I will or not is another issue I probably should but yes this is a very very grey um blue a very blue grey dye lot compared to the original which was much more of a silvery grey but hey this is what happens when you make stuff out of leftover yarn and didn't, didn't buy Enough for the project to start with. Let this be a lesson for everybody else. Learn from my mistakes. Always buy extra yarn. Always buy extra yarn. That's really bad idea. Don't buy extra. Always buy extra yarn. <laughs> so those are my two on-the-go projects at the moment. Both two nice heavyweight shawls. So let's show you some almost finished objects. I mean, they're practically finished. Bar sewing in the ends. I hate sewing in the ends. And they've not been blocked because I do not have enough space at the moment to block things and I'll get around to it at some point. But so this is my study stripe shawl. Finally off the off the needles. It is massive. Way bigger than my wingspan. Um so and you, so you've sort of seen me working on this a, a few times. As I've mentioned before, I started off, let's see, where's the start? Up here. I started off following the pattern exactly. Um, where sort of going, starting off with the grey and then stripes of colour with little bands of grey in between. And this is using, the grey is West Yorkshire Spinner's signature four ply. And the colours are Five Buff Boxes Blackberry Picking Mini Skein Set. Um, and as I've gone through and used up the the colours, and the colours, the, I, the remaining colour was no longer big enough to make a whole stripe on its own, I started to then grow out the grey again. If you can sort of see, I mean, I can't see what you can see because I've now got a a whole huge shawl between me and the camera but I'm going to hope vaguely that you can see that and then as I then got further and further out I then just used up the last little bits of colour that I had on putting a border around it so I've used up every single little scrap of the of the fibre fox set and I think I've got about five mm, ten grams left of the West Yorkshire Spinners um, of the grey so that's used up I had a little bit more than a skein to start with because I had the leftovers from my grey and yellow um, uh, brioche shawl. Used that up in this. So it's, it's basically I just kept going till I ran out of yarn for the most part. There was a tiny little bit of grey left, but I wasn't going to risk making an extra um, row or two and not having quite enough and having to undo it again. So I really like this. It is, as I've said massive I think it looks quite nice both ways round front and back it's a asymmetrical shawl which I'm not quite sure how to wear it I think I'm gonna have to get sort of get creative with no, it... something like that I think it looks really nice I do need to sew in all the ends and I need to block it into some form of shape but I'm really pleased with it and I think so I'm love I'm absolutely in love with the colours I think the colours work so well and again it's a very autumnal shawl and we're about to hit spring so I've mistimed this one completely as well but I'm really pleased with it if there's a better way of wearing an asymmetric shawl can you share it with me because I really don't know what I'm doing with this but but it's really lovely and I'm very pleased with it. And yeah, just look at these colours. They're so pretty. 
Yes. Um, so... Uh, do you remind me? Yeah, so this was the Stripe Study Shawl. I've talked about it a few times before. And I've got my hair all a mess. Um, the Stripe Study Shawl by Vera Valamaki. Um, really lovely. End still to be woven in, still to be blocked. At some point. I need to do a, I need to have an ends party again. I, um, some friends of mine um, got into the habit of doing ends parties where you save up all your ends and then when you get together as a group and you help each other sew in each other's ends um, to make it less tedious. Um, I should get some people together and do that again. That would be a way of getting things finished. The other project that I was working on last time was my crumb cardigan. So that's the crumb cardigan by Andy Sutherland and it's finished! Apart from blocking and buttons and sewing the ends in. But those bits don't count. The knitting bit is finished, which is my first cardigan, um, which let me try and put it on and see if that makes it, it makes it easy to show. I mean, you can see it a little bit better. Not much, but a little bit. I'll try and see if I can stand up without knocking everything over I've got around me. Hang on a sec. Cardigan! <laughs> um, I'm really pleased with this. So, I, as I said, it needs blocking, it needs buttons which I think will then give it a bit of a better shape. The arms are a bit baggy up here. I had a bit of um, yeah, I had a bit of a thing with the arms, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but I really, I like the croppedness. As I've mentioned before, I, I tend to wear quite a lot of dresses. So having something that then allows the dress to flare up from underneath it, I quite like that. Um, it was really easy for the most part. Um, come back down. Um, yeah, so it's quite a simple, it's mostly stockinette stitch. It has got the, um, it's got this sort of lace pattern around all the edges, around the sleeves and around the collar and down the front. Um, but apart from that, it's fairly simple. Um, I found it, I said, quite an easy knit, apart from picking up stitches especially for the armholes, but also across the neck. Um, turns out I really hate picking up stitches. Um, when it came to the armholes, because I'm knitting, obviously knitting plus sizes, um, there's a lot of stitches to pick up. And it says, pick up X number of stitches evenly. And I could not, the maths didn't work. I couldn't, there wasn't, an obvious way of picking up the stitches to make them cast on evenly so it was first I was like every second row pick up a stitch and then no and then do and then and trying to get it to match on both sides was a nightmare it took me about four attempts on the first arm to pick up the correct number of stitches on the second arm it took me two attempts I still didn't have the right and I ended up picking up extra stitches as I went around the first row of actual knitting me and picking up stitches obviously not friends at the moment is there a trick to this i tried marking it out with stitch markers to sort of to pick it up in chunks didn't work um i'm sure there's a, a knack to it that i am not aware of but so that was annoying um and then i think i don't know if this is down to particular my body shape or if it's um sizing for plus size garments in general but in order to get the body size big enough I was knitting the largest size in the pattern the largest size in the pattern left me with sleeves that looked like pillowcases um just sort of massive dangly cuffy things at the bottom and yeah it's almost it was as yeah there was an assumption I think that every single part of me would be equally larger um, than, yeah, basically, well, I've got big arms, they're not as big as the rest of me. So again, it, maybe it's me, maybe it's the way people 
grade patterns for larger sizes I don't know um but that meant that I had to I finished the sleeve the first sleeve once um and I took off the decided to go back and I took off the ribbing I picked up just below the lace pattern which was one of the scariest things I've ever done um ripped back put in another um set of decreases to bring it smaller enough so that the neck the lace pattern would work which added on the, like an extra couple of inches to the length of the sleeve so in the pattern it's like a three quarter length sleeve or in me it's now a full length sleeve or at least it's almost full length and it will be full length by the time i've blocked it and stretched it out a little bit um but it has made at least made the bottom ends a bit the the cuffs more sensible and i also then um did the cuffs in a slightly smaller needle size in the end um and i managed to do that on both sleeves to get them to match so i was quite pleased that i managed to adapt that pattern to do that so generally really pleased um i'll be really excited to see what it looks like when it does have buttons when the ends are sewn in when it is blocked but as i mentioned i don't have anywhere to block stuff at the moment i need to make some space in the house i don't have any buttons and I detest sewing in ends, so hopefully I will get this ready, but this kind of is a spring cardigan, so if I can get this done soon, this should get quite a fair amount of wear early this year, and I love the colour. This is um, Malabrigo Rios in the Reflecting Pool colourway, really lovely, and again, because of me and size, I ran out of yarn and had to buy another ball, so I have got couldn't quite do it with one i had just enough to finish the sleeves just um but i couldn't do the button bands or the arm uh, the neck band without another ball so i've got leftovers hat leftovers this may be hat leftovers or i've seen some really lovely color worky patterns recently that I would like to try out maybe that would be one of the colors for that for a cowl or something we'll have a think about that one later on in the year not just yet definitely later on in the year and the reason I'm going to think about it later on in the year is because I am going on a yarn diet sort of to be explained um I was sat here a, um, a little while ago and I was could vaguely remember seeing some yarn in my stash. I couldn't remember where it was and I couldn't remember quite how much I had, but I knew I had it and I was like, it, def it definitely wasn't in the box when I went rummage through it the other day, so where could it be? And I had a little bit of a dig around and I found it and there is much more than I thought there was, which is wonderful. So, um, I have a bag, a very big bag, full of cones of sport weight merino now i bought these three years ago four years ago um because i've got a knitting machine um the knitting machine is my mum's old knitting machine she gave it to me a number of years ago um actually she gave it to me probably about 15 years ago when i was still at university and i thought it would or just after I'd left university and I really wanted to learn how to use it and I got it and I never set it up and she took it away again um, and then when I moved into um, well when Neil and I moved in together I got it back again then and it sat under the bed for a little while and then eventually we did set it up and it didn't work we did what we could to do some maintenance on it to get it working up again and I have done some test knits and that's about as far as I've got on it. Me and it are not friends yet. Um, I think it needs some really good maintenance. It, I need to find someone who can basically give it a full overhaul. It is an old machine. It is lovely but it's an old machine and I don't have the skills to give it the, the TLC that it needs just yet. And I could really do with going on a knitting machine course somewhere to actually teach me to well, how, what to do because I don't know what I'm doing. And my mum, my mum used to use it all the time, but she's kind of, it's been 
30 years since she's used it consistently and she can't really remember what to do and how to make it work lovely. So I went uh, with all the joy of overspending and stash acquisition and bought loads of yarn on cones to use. I mean, loads of yarn on cones to use with the knitting machine. More. Um, this is just one bag. There's another bag. Um, and... All the yarn, it's so pretty. Um, I mean, I love it, but um, because me and the machine have not been getting on, um, I haven't barely used any of it. So, I mean, for the time being, let's accept the fact that the knitting machine isn't going to happen and let's just use the yarn because I have got a lot of it. There is 1,600 metres on each of these cones. I have, of this particular one, six cones of sport weight merino. There's got to be something fun I can do with this, right? So I found a pattern for a stripy cardigan that I quite like the look of. I will try and share a photo of that here. That is the um, Marco Polo cardigan by Ella, Ella Torrente. Um, I quite like the shape of it. I thought one of the greys, not sure which one, but one of the two greys and then the colours are stripes, do multicolour stripes. Why not? That could be a bit of fun. And get into this cardigan love. Um, so that's one set of, of yarn that I found. And so this is part of why I'm about to go on a vaguely enforced yarn diet is to get me to use some of this wonderful stash that I've got. Um, it also ties in nicely with the stash knittle on that Leslie over at Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast is running, the Stash Cal 2019. Um, so yes, I will use some of this up. What I also found, because when I get into something, I get overexcited. Um, oh, look, I bought more yarn on cones because eBay and I don't really know what I'm doing. I went, oh, yarn on cones. And I didn't really know what weight it was or anything about it, really. So I have these, which are another three, which are quite difficult to see. It's sort of a... A maroon, a grey and a black or possibly very dark blue. I can't make my mind up which colour that middle one actually is. It depends on which light I see it as to whether I think it's black or dark blue. Um, but I have these and these have got oh, God knows how much on them. Um, I did manage to work it out. Uh, these have got over 7,000 metres per cone. But they are very thin. I mean, I'm not going to get this to focus, am I? It's very thin. It is two ply, I think, yeah. It's two ply, but it is lace cobweb weight. It's, it, it's, it's written in machine speak. I don't understand it. It two slash 30. Um, I know that means something. I can't remember what that means. But yes, I've got loads of this as well, so I need to make something out of these. Um, this one is Lana Gatto Harmony. Yes, that one's Lana Gatto Harmony. This, These two are Zegna Barufa Cashwool. Um, the Harmony is... Some... Thing. merino apparently they're all merino i'm still trying to work out still trying to match them um with ravelry databases of what the yarn types they actually are because i have not kept any of the information about them and there is the cones do have some info in them but it is a little bit limited in what that is and it doesn't make any sense to me because it's all gibberish um but I'm learning, I'm learning, and yes, so I have the, oh, 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 hang on a minute, there's another cone of stuff. There's another one. Um, this again, this is, again, probably a sport weight, but it's a different sport weight to these ones. These ones are um, Yeoman Yarns Sport. Um, these ones, I have found out exactly what they are. I've been able to track those ones down. Yeah, 
merino. It's yeah, they're one hundred hundred percent merino. Um, so those all match really nicely with each other. This one is again, it's another eBay purchase of. Oh look, it's a shiny thing on eBay. Buy it. It's actually a really lovely yarn. It's. I think it's a four or five ply. Um, with like the majority is of sort of a mixture of a, a tealy blue and a navy blue applied together. Um, it's really pretty and I've got absolutely no idea what it is. It says it's a middle fill and the bit of packing information that I found on it also said it was 100% merino except I've not been able to find at all a matching yarn in the Ravelry database that works with that and the one that I have found that looks the closest to it definitely isn't 100% merino so it could be anything quite frankly but it's something like that and it is lovely and again for that one I think I've got again probably going on for about 1700 meters of whatever it is so I've got enough yarn and this is excluding the projects that I unfrogged are over Christmas to give me enough yarn to make a big cardigan um, and all the other stuff that is currently lying around in stash. So I'm not going to go on the strictest of yarn diets, but my intention is to not buy any more yarn to start new projects with until I have made at least four projects from existing yarn. With one exception, which is that I'm going to unravel next weekend the yarn festival. So once I've got back from unravel, I will be going on the yarn diet. Unravel is the first yarn festival, sort of proper yarn yarn festival that I've gone to. I've been to the um, knitting and stitching show before quite a few times um, with other with friends that are sort of more stitchers than. Um, knitters um and that has been great fun but um i'm really looking forward to going to unravel because i think there's going to be a lot more um hand dyed yarn there and yeah really interested to see who's exhibiting and what's going on there um yeah i'm meeting some friends going down with some friends um that i don't think they've been to yarn festivals before at all so I'll be quite excited to see what they get into. I don't even know if they've had much exposure to hand-dyed yarn of any description yet. So it'll be really interesting to see what they make of it. So yes, looking forward to going to see Unravel. I need to get back from it as quickly as possible afterwards because I'm meeting my drumming group for dinner that night as well. So uh, that weekend should be really good fun. I'm looking forward to it. Neil's going off to see his dad. Uh, for the weekend because it's his dad's birthday so I get to have a fun weekend of yarn and drumming which is kind of my dream space so yeah that should be really good. I wanted to say a very quick thing um, obviously we've been talking within the knitting space and especially in the knitting Instagram space about uh, diversity within the knitting community and the oppression that black people and people of colour um, and in black indigenous people of color are facing within the community the difficulties the misrepresentation and i have heard that there have been quite a few um especially white women um saying oh sorry can we get back to knitting now and i a don't say that and b it is perfectly possible to knit and be political at the same time. There's nothing that says that you have to stop knitting in order to be anti-racism, um, to stand up for black people, people of colour within the knitting community. You can knit and do that at the same time. You know, you do knit nights, you can knit and talk at the same time. There is nothing that stops you from being political and knitting at the same time. And I don't think that anyone within my tiny little bubble of this podcast has been saying that, but hearing that people have been saying that has been making me really angry. And I can imagine that it's making um, black indigenous people of colour really fucking furious and deservedly so. So yes, we can knit and we can be political and we can be angry at the same time. So let's just do that. And then we can knit and have all the pretty shiny things and smash 
racism and patriarchy and oppression and sexism and all of those other things at the same time. And yeah, it doesn't have to be a one or the other thing. We can do both. That just wanted to say that. I think that's quite important for me to say. The final thing that I did want to say today is I've finally joined my local um, community's uh, knit night. There is a knit night round here on sort of every couple of weeks on a Wednesday evening and I finally last week went along to my first meeting. Um, I went along with um, met Leslie over there um, from the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. I mention her quite often because uh, she's a good friend of mine. She is also a drummer and she's sort of introduced me to this to this knit night. Um, I would say that walking through the doors of the knit night on my own, Leslie was already there. Um, I knew she was going to be there, which was which was good. But um, walking through the doors on my own to that knit night was one of the scariest things that I've done since I walked through the doors of the drumming practice session for the very first time on my own. I'm I'm not good at meeting new people. I'm scared, scared of people generally. They terrify me. Um, not good in that kind of social situation. But I did really enjoy it. It was lovely to meet so many people. So hello to anyone that's watching. Hi. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed Knit Night. I'm looking forward to coming back again and I hope to get to know you all um, much better in the future. And thank you for having me and for making me feel really welcome, despite me being shit scared when I walk through the door. Uh, okay, so that's everything from me today. Um, well, we had some almost finished projects. I will try and get them blocked and actually properly finished at some point. Um, maybe by the next time. I will hopefully have some shiny unravel goodies to share with you next time. And um, yeah, I'm really, I basically, I'm really enjoying having my knitting mojo back. I lost it for a couple of years where I sort of do bits and pieces, but not much. And I'm really enjoying having that mojo back and feeling quite productive with knitting. I might not be making as much as some people, but I'm get, managing to get through quite a lot of stuff and keep things on the go and keep the momentum going. And I'm really enjoying that at the moment. And um, the podcasting community is a huge part of that. That's keeping me motivated and keeping me, keeping me knitting. So thank you very much for that. Really appreciate you all for taking the time to come and watch this. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments below. Or if you want to um, catch up with me over on Instagram. I'm Ferriton Gibbon on Instagram. Um, there'll be links at the end. Um, you can also find me on Ravelry as Merry Alk. Um, and I'm on Twitter as Merry Alk as well. And yeah, that's me. Um, please feel free to chat to me anywhere you fancy chatting to me. And say, say any questions about anything you fancy, um, please feel free to drop me a line. Um, lovely to see you all and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.